pulmonary hypertension an increase in the pressure in the pulmonary circulation is called pulmonary hypertension 20 mm of mercury or less at rest is considered normal 21 to 24 mm is equivocal and often needs further investigation uh, when the mean pulmonary pressure is more than 25 mm of mercury we call it pulmonary hypertension if pulmonary hypertension is untreated there is a poor prognosis it eventually leads to right heart failure and death they usually present with non-specific symptoms like dyspnea fatigue angina let's have a look at the 2013 nice classification which divides the etiology of pulmonary hypertension into five groups one pulmonary arterial hypertension two due to left heart disease three lung diseases with or without hypoxia four thromboembolic pulmonary disease, five, unclear multifactorial mechanisms. Let's have a look at group one, pulmonary arterial hypertension. What are the causes? Could be idiopathic, heritable, drug or toxin induced, connective tissue disease, HIV, portal hypertension, congenital heart disease, schistosomiasis, pulmonary veno-occlusive disease, pulmonary capillary hemangiomatosis, persistent pulmonary hypertension of newborn left heart diseases are under group 2 could be systolic dysfunction diastolic dysfunction valvular disease congenital or acquired left heart inflow or outflow tract obstruction and congenital cardiomyopathies lung diseases are chronic obstructive pulmonary disease interstitial lung disease Diseases which show a mixed obstructive and restrictive pattern, sleep disordered breathing, alveolar hypoventilation disorders, high altitude exposure, and developmental lung disease. Group 4 is specifically for thromboembolic disease. Multifactorial causes are all clubbed in group 5, which include chronic hemolytic anemia, myeloproliferative disorders, splenectomy, sarcoidosis pulmonary histiocytosis, lymphangioleomyomatosis, glycogen storage disorders, thyroid disorders, fibrosing mediastinitis, and chronic renal failure. Let's have a look at the CT imaging protocol that I would recommend you to do. A hybrid protocol is recommended. Initially do a plain chest CT in exhalation. Pulmonary angiogram protocol, it should be non-ECG gated done craniocaudally using bolus tracking keep the region of interest in the main pulmonary artery for 100 Hounsfield units inject contrast at a rate of 4 to 5 milliliters per second the IV iodinated contrast should be between 80 to 100 milliliters reconstruct the images with 1 mm section thickness and 1 mm interval when we are reporting a case of pulmonary hypertension we can broadly divide the checklist into four categories pulmonary arterial findings lung parenchymal findings cardiac and then the mediastinal findings let's have a look at the findings in the pulmonary artery a diameter of 29 millimeters or more is suggestive of pulmonary artery hypertension another way to look at it is to look at the diameter of the pulmonary artery if it is more than the ascending aorta at the same level where do you measure it? Measure it in the axial plane at the bifurcation perpendicular to the long axis of the pulmonary artery. Other findings include an increase in the artery to bronchus ratio more than one in three or more lobes. As the severity and the chronicity of the pulmonary hypertension worsens, there will be right ventricular hypertrophy resulting in the interventricular septum to initially straighten following which it bulges into the left ventricle. One must remember that the right ventricular system is a low pressure system compared to the left ventricle and as a result, the interventricular system in a normal patient slightly leans towards the right ventricle. When there's a complete reversal, you understand it is a chronic severe pulmonary hypertension. What are the other findings you can look at in the pulmonary artery? Look for peripheral calcification. It's usually seen in severe and late stages. It's usually seen in patients with long-standing shunts like atrial septal defect and Eisenmenger syndrome. Etiology is a peripheral thrombus or an atheromatous wall calcification. 
thrombus tends to be crescent shaped and forms obtuse angles with the vessel wall other etiologies are microvalve disorders and rarely calcification can be seen in chronic thromboembolic disease typically peripheral arteries are seen to prune in pulmonary hypertension however in some conditions in pulmonary hypertension there can be peripheral dilatation one such condition is portal hypertension other is hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia third is microscopic tumor emboli so in hepatopulmonary syndrome there are two patterns of uh, uh, appearance seen in the blood vessels one is a type 1 where there is only dilated blood vessels type 2 where there is av malformations accompanied with nodular dilated vessels look for eccentric filling defects in the pulmonary arterial tree they could represent a mural thrombus or an eccentric emboli commonest etiology is a chronic pulmonary thromboembolism how does it occur due to chronic high pressure look for other clues that will help you diagnose pulmonary embolism like mosaic attenuation enlarged bronchial arteries filling defects can also be seen in portopulmonary hypertension and eisenmenger syndrome intraarterial soft tissue this is something that is very rare but can occur in the presence of tumor emboli primaries usually tend to be the breast stomach liver kidney lung prostate and choriocarcinoma rarest of the lot is a primary tumor of the pulmonary artery which is a sarcoma or a leiomyosarcoma it tends to occur close to the pulmonary valve in the central artery and can extend to either of the branches the left and the right a bland thrombus is distinguished by the lack of its enhancement post contrast administration let's move on to the lung findings central lobular nodules central lobular ground glass nodules are seen in severe pulmonary hypertension what is the etiology cholesterol granulomas from degenerate excess surfactant recurrent pulmonary hem- hemorrhage foci of plexogenic arterial lesions they are usually not seen in untreated idiopathic pulmonary artery hypertension when they are seen in an untreated idiopathic case consider veno occlusive disease or capillary hemangiomatosis as an etiology always be wary that use of vasodilators in these cases can result in flash edema and death look for mosaic attenuation in the lung mosaic attenuation occurs due to a difference in lung perfusion in different regions of the lung areas of oligemia or decreased perfusion will show small vessels lack of air trapping they tend to appear dark chronic pulmonary them- thromboembolism is the most common cause of mosaic attenuation look for interlobular septal thickening it is usually seen in left heart disease what are the types of interlobular septal thickening that could be seen in pulmonary hypertension smooth usually is due to uh, left heart disease due to dilated lymphatics and venules when it's irregular it's due to fibrosis when it is nodular consider sarcoidosis or malignancy lymphangitis carcinomatosis a differential for smooth lines are also veno occlusive disease and capillary hemangiomatosis these conditions will not have other findings of left heart disease and that's how you distinguish it from left heart disease bronchiectasis is another finding we need to look out for pulmonary hypertension is a sequel of long standing bronchiectasis it bronchiectasis causes hypoxic pulmonary vasoconstriction and the destruction of the vascular bed it is also seen in parenchymal fibrosis and sarcoidosis 60% of the cases of pulmonary thromboembolism demonstrates bronchiectasis look for subpleural peripheral opacities they tend to be scarring due to infarction 80% seen in chronic pulmonary thromboembolism it can also be seen in chronic hemolytic anemia schistosomiasis reticular peripheral opacities are typically seen in interstitial lung disease the presence of ground glass opacities is due to pulmonary edema some interstitial lung disease connective tissue disorders secondary drug or toxic reactions chronic hemolytic anemia schistosomiasis when seen with central lobular nodules consider veno occlusive disease and capillary hemangiomatosis lung parenchyma can sometimes show diffuse solid nodules which tend to be most common in sarcoidosis they are less than 4 mm in size ill defined bilateral 
peripheral or perilymphatic, axial distribution, upper and mid zone involvement. They may have associated hilar adenopathy, upper lung fibrosis. Other causes include metastasis, metastatic pulmonary calcification. Pulmonary tumor thrombotic microangiopathy can also demonstrate diffuse solid nodules. Let's move on to the heart now. Usually the congenital causes are responsible for pulmonary hypertension. These include the untreated left to right trans, ASD, partial anomalous pulmonary venous return, VSD, P PDA. 50% of the patients with VSD and 10% with ASD develop pulmonary hypertension. Those who are treated for shunt lesion also have a high incidence. Treated TGA patients also present with hypertension. Left ventricle disease is the most common cause. Uh, it can be systolic or diastolic dysfunction. There could be valve disorders. Left atrial tumors can also sometimes cause pulmonary hypertension. Look for valve leaflet thickening and calcification with upstream chamber dilatation. In the mediastinum, look for hypertrophied bronchial arteries. An increased flow in the bronchial system is due to an obstruction in the proximal pulmonary tree. Quite common in chronic pulmonary thromboembolism. When the diameter exceeds 1.5 mm, that's when we call a bronchial artery to be hypertrophied. Dilated non-bronchial collaterals may also be seen. The intercostal, inferior phrenic, and the internal mammary. Seen in Eisenmenger syndrome, post-synodic heart disease repair. Other, other etiologies include Takayasu arteritis and fibrosing mediastinitis. So in order to summarize, if you broadly look at it, you need to have a checklist where you look at the pulmonary artery, the lung parenchyma, the heart and the mediastinum. Make sure you look at the diameter of the main pulmonary artery. Look for contents within the artery, peripheral calcification, look for the caliber, is there peripheral dilatation, look for eccentric filling defects, look for intraarterial soft tissue. Lung parenchyma, look for central lobular nodules, ground glass opacities, diffuse solid nodules, mosaic attenuation, interlobular septal thickening, bronchiectasis. In the heart, look for left heart disease, congenital heart disease, valve anomalies, and in the mediastinum, watch out for the bronchial arteries and their diameter.